for a free copy of these six steps, please go ahead and see the information in the description box. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Women's Financial Empowerment Group. I'm your host, Ruth Agbeloso. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. If this is your first time, please go ahead and subscribe, like this video, and share it with your friends. Oh, and hit the notification bell. That way you'll know whenever I upload a new video, which is usually twice a week, but over the holidays, I'll be recording, I'll be uploading a new video about once a week. If you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back and supporting my channel. Please go ahead and like, share, do all those wonderful things. Today's video is a follow-up from my previous video about New Year's resolutions and goal settings. Oh, I forgot to mention to you that I am a financial coach. So if you need someone to help you to get from point A to point B in your financial journey, please go ahead and see my information in the description box and let's see whether or not we'd be a good fit to work together. Let's get into today's video. Here are the six steps that I think are vital to being able to set goals and achieve them. So let's get into it. Step number one, think about what would happen if you don't achieve your goal. It's a good place to get started because keeping those things in mind helps to give you that boost to even start. It gives you the drive to work towards your goal. So for example, if it was a weight loss goal, think about if you don't lose those 20 pounds, what would your life be like? What would you feel like? How would you feel? If we're talking about money goals, which is what I'm going to be focusing on, here's an example. If you are working towards setting up your emergency fund, this is a good place to start. Think about what life would be like if you don't have that emergency fund. So for instance, if you lost your job, you probably wouldn't have enough money to continue your lifestyle until you get another job. Or if you got sick, or something else happened, you wouldn't have the money that you would need to take care of certain expenses until things changed. So an emergency fund would be really helpful. So just keep that in the back of your head as a way to drive you towards achieving your goal. Step number two, set SMART goals. Now you may have heard of this term before in a company meeting or what have you, but so I didn't make up this term, but I feel like it's so helpful when you're setting up, when you're setting goals. The S in SMART is specific. You don't want to just say you want to save up some money for your emergency fund, but you want to say exactly how much you want to save up. So for instance, a thousand dollars. Okay. You want to name it specifically. M, you want your goal to be measurable. How are you going to feel when you achieve it? How are you going to know that you achieved your goal? What is it going to look like? What have you? So if you have a log sheet that you keep track of how much money you've saved up, when you get to your goal, you'll be able to see this is the amount that you have. You'll be checking your account and you'll see that when your account has this amount in it, then you have achieved your goal. So you have to have a way to measure your achievement of this goal. A, you have to make your goal attainable. You don't want to set a goal that's so out there that it's like you you won't be able to achieve it. It's almost impossible to achieve it. So you want to set goals that are achievable. And you know what? shy away from that tendency to make goals super easy because they won't be that important to you and you probably won't achieve them anyway. It'll be a little bit ridiculous for you. R, you wanna make sure that your goals are relevant. You wanna make sure that your goals line up with your values, with your plans for your life. So in the case of an emergency fund if you are thinking that you want to get your house in order financially you want to be more responsible with your money having an emergency fund really isn't in line with that so that is a really great goal for that purpose and t you want to make sure that it's time bounding you want to make sure that you have a specific cutoff date so for instance if I say May 31st, 2021, that is a specific cutoff day. By that time, I will have achieved this goal. Okay, so step number three, 
write down your goals. The temptation is to not write down the goal and just keep it in here. But let me tell you, it's a very important step because when you write down something, for some reason, it triggers something in your brain and it solidifies it so that you'll be able to accomplish it. So if you think that just seeing it makes it happen, a lot of times that is just not going to happen. You need to write it down. And I would even say you need to write it down and have it in several places. And I'll get back to that further on in this discussion. Step number four, you want to make sure you have an action plan. This is the meat and potatoes of goal setting. This is the how. How are you going to achieve those goals? You want to make sure that you write down your action plan. And again, later on in the video, I'll give you an example that will show you how you are going to be able to put all of these elements together. The next step, step number five, follow through. I recommend that you use your electronic gadgets like your phone, your Alexa app, or anything else that you have to help you with follow through. You can set reminders timers. You can use your calendar. There's so many things that you can use to help you with follow through. And here's where we apply what we've done with writing out our goal and having it in various places, having various copies of it. So when you write out your goal, you're going to want to have a copy of it in your bedroom, your bathroom, your kitchen, your car, any significant place where you know you're going to be at during any typical day. And whenever you come across that goal, you're going to want to say the goal because in the process of saying the goal several times a day, it becomes solidified in your mind and it becomes a part of your daily life. And let me tell you, before long, you'll be achieving that goal because it's such a part of you and it won't be something that you allow yourself to forget. So please don't forget this step. It's very important to follow through with your goal by using these different elements you'll be able to follow through step number six accountability I really love this step and I highly recommend it of course I am a financial coach so my clients are accountable to me if you don't have a financial coach it's okay you can use a family member or a friend you can tell them about what you're trying to achieve so that they can support you in this journey. And don't worry if you don't have a family member or trusted friend, you can also reach out to someone online in an online group that shares your values or your commitment that can really cheer you on. And if you're struggling for some reason, they can also give you that boost to keep on going. And at the end, you can have someone to give you a pat on the back and that's going to feel great and it's going to boost your self-esteem. Now, here's an example of putting all these elements together to make a plan. By May 31st, 2021, I will have $1,000 saved up in my emergency plan, in my emergency fund. And this is how I'll do it. I'll take $200 a month out of my overtime pay, which I currently get $500. I will take that money out and I will put it aside into my savings account that's designated for my emergency plan. I'll know that I've achieved my goal because when I look in that dedicated account, I'll have that thousand dollars, but I'll track it along the way by keeping a log of every time when I deposit that money. So there you go. There's a way that you can have that whole plan set up and write it out. And here's a bonus step that I want to give you. So this is not required, but I do it and I really believe that it's an important step, not official, but it's a good step. Reward yourself. I love to reward myself. I love to tell myself at the end of a goal, I'm going to be able to do something or eat something or go someplace or what have you. So your reward can be whatever is important to you. It could be a special movie night or a trip or anything else that won't derail you from what you're trying to achieve with your other goals, of course. But something that will make you feel like, hey, I've achieved this. I've worked for this. And you may even want to write it into your plan that, hey, at the end of achieving this goal, I will be able to do X thing. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Please go ahead and like this video and share it with your friends and leave a comment. Let me know whatever goals you're working on or what in this video has really stood out to you. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, change your mind 
change your pocketbook.